Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching. My name is Yadira. If you are new, welcome. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. This video is gonna be a tag response. I was tagged by the beautiful LV Lover CC or Karis here on YouTube. I'm gonna link her video down below in case you have not watched it. She tagged me on a tag that was originally created by Isabel Styles. I will also tag her video down below just in case you do want to watch that one as well. The tag is about if I was to lose my entire collection, what would I buy first or how would I go about recreating my collection once again so i'm going to talk about the 10 items plus i do have a bonus to speak to you about on the items that i would do it all over again with Before sitting down to record this video, I walked into my closet and I took a hard look at everything that I have and I said, what are my favorite pieces? What are the things that I want to wear almost every single time, but sometimes I don't because it doesn't go with my outfit quite perfectly? Or what are those things that I think about first whenever I am needing anything from any category? So I'm gonna start with jewelry and that is a set by Tiffany's. I am purposely wearing it. This is the Return to Tiffany set. So I do have the studs i do also have a necklace and i have another necklace that also has a return to tiffany pendant on it and then i do have the beaded bracelet with the tiffany blue enamel on the other side this is also from return to tiffany collection the return to tiffany line is a line that has been a part of the company for many many years and it had its popularity with the choker heart tag necklaces as well as those chunky bangles i don't have either of those two i still got some return to so many pieces but in a more toned down more polished way through the beaded necklace so i think that i would definitely do it again with this exact same set or if for whatever reason it is discontinued i would still definitely do a set from tiffany's so that would be a pair of earrings a necklace and a bracelet and mainly because i have had this set for so many years i i forget if i started with the earrings or the necklace but i got them like not too far away from one another i've had it for maybe nine years something like that the bracelet obviously is newer um, but even at that it is for sure more than three years old and having these two pieces being the oldest they still look like i bought them last month two months ago sometime this year what i'm saying is even if you get scratches on them i have had a great luck with being able to polish my pieces and remove the scratches making them look brand new now this is not white gold this is sterling silver which is why you're able to polish it with without having to rub down any of the bladed color off. So that's one of the things that I really do love about Tiffany's. Tiffany's is a brand that carries a weight of luxury for jewelry. If anyone really wanted to splurge into jewelry, they're probably going to think about Tiffany's being one of those brands that they would at least browse through their catalog to see what it is that they have that might suit their collection. So I feel like Tiffany's is one of those brands that will be here forever. And plus it's so iconic to the fashion world to where it's, I, I have to go there <laughs> i don't have a lot of pieces by tiffany's um like i said i do have another hard tag necklace and that is about it i never got the return to tiffany ring or any ring from tiffany's i do have a tiffany wish list and at some point in time i might get around to crossing off some of those items off my list if i was to do it again like i said i would try to do it with this exact same set but if not i would definitely look into pieces that are dual meaning like my heart tag necklace has both silver and their rubido rose gold gold on it so possibly a set that is mixed metal to give my collection a little bit of more versatility especially if it's the first jewelry set that i'll be acquiring back like starting fresh i would want it to be either this set in particular or i'm gonna link down below the other set that i would think that i would get instead sticking with jewelry the next item that i would get is a pair of real diamond earrings i do currently have three different um, sets in my collection all real diamond and I, I love that I, it's one of the ones that I interchange on a day-to-day -day basis and I really love that because it's very classic and it's timeless right classic timeless it goes together and also it, it matches just about anything like I said I do have three currently in my collection but starting all over that would be very expensive so I would opt for one the three that I do currently have they're all studs all of these diamond earrings that I currently do have in my collection are an a white gold finish so i have a one-third princess cut diamond and then i also do have one i 
forget the exact weight i do have the paperwork for all of these i believe it's like 0.6 carats for my next set and this one in particularly has a lot of different diamonds all around so it does give a whole different style when wearing them and then the last pair of diamond stud earrings that i do have are in this oval cut one carat each so two total weight this pair is so pretty because the mount that it's on it looks kind of like a tulip and on the leaves i guess we can say or on the prongs there are like three different smaller size diamonds on there so it has a decorative feature on the side and then you also do have that oval right in the front i was debating on whether to get an oval or a round whenever i did get the oval ones but what sold me was one oval because it's elongated it kind of looks bigger so that's one thing and then the other thing is that a round it looks round in any position that it might be in but if you have an oval it might look different if it's upwards or if it's slanted or if it's like like this like you might be able to see my current earrings right now they are a heart the heart tags from return of tiffany and if they're like this i mean they look fine right but there is an option to where they can be at a slight angle and it kind of gives just a subtle of a difference because it was so expensive that's one of the things that sold me on getting an oval versus a round stud earring so i think i would do an oval again if i had to then all of the earrings that i do have i often reach for one of these three and i I would definitely do a, another set of diamonds in my collection. Also, I should have definitely cleaned these right before showing you, but here we are. One last pair of earrings that I wanted to talk about. These would be a round stud and just a classic round stud. So I have three in my collection. I do have a gemstone pearl earrings that I got from James Avery. I will link it down below. And then the next ones that I got are both the same size, eight millimeter round studs and 18 carats gold. So white gold and yellow gold. And these I actually did get as a set. Out of the these three the one pair that i use the most is my yellow gold eight millimeter round studs so i would most definitely do it all over again going with yellow gold or if not possibly a rose gold sort of round stud and the reason why i would go with gold not only because like i said it's one of the ones that i wear often compared to the other two but also because if i was to do a diamond diamond more than likely is going to be in a silver or a white tone color whereas i have seen diamond in a gold base and it really doesn't look too much like the diamond really detracts from the actual color of the metal i feel at least so i would definitely do a diamond in a white and then a round stud in a yellow or rose gold sort of color now let's move on to the next item and this is a wallet i do have one by louis vuitton that i'm going to show you this is my emprunt key pouch in the marine rouge combination this particular style is discontinued and i am currently using a different wallet but this is the one that i would try to look for again because i've used this for so many years before i decided to discontinue using it not because i'm not happy with it but because i want to give it a break and yes i can wear it until the threads come off but but I can't get it anymore like I want to preserve it just a little bit so this is the one and I had such a great luck with this one being on prompt leather from Louis Vuitton that if I can't get one I would possibly look into whatever options Louis Vuitton currently has for on prompt. I really like to keep my key fob with my cash and cards and that is why I stuck with using this one in particular for so long I've tried looking into Chanel I tried looking into other things but I still very much wanted it to be a wallet and not just like a pouch you know what I mean so that is why I stuck with this one and i really love it so i would definitely look into getting one in the pre-owned markets again like if it's not available i would look to see what louis vuitton has but i really do love this one and i kind of want them to bring it back it, it doesn't have to be in this particular style it could be revamped like it could be backwards Give me the zipper in the front and the pocket in the back. I don't care. Just bring me something similar. Or it doesn't even have to have a flap. Just, I don't even know. Just something similar to where I can keep my key fob card keys and some change and I would be happy. And that it's compact, right? gotta check all those boxes so the emprunt key pouch by louis vuitton so now moving into the handbag category so i picked a small bag a medium bag and a larger bag the recent items that i have acquired to my collection are rather small but for this video i wanted it to be something that was tried and true the very first one i'm going to show you if you've seen my handbag collection video you can probably guess this one because i have multiple of it the only thing with this particular style that i am going to show you is that one 
one is already discontinued and the other two i believe one of the other two is discontinued as well i'm not too sure i don't really keep up with these because i already own them and i'm not really trying to buy a fourth i think that the only option that would be able to get is the monogram i feel and what i'm talking about is the pochette accessories i do have the trifecta the damir Ibn, damir azor and also the monogram these bags are perfect when i say perfect i've used this for daily use i've used this for a night out i've also used this like as my vacation bag right because it's canvas it's pretty much worry free and yes like if you do get the monogram which is like the only one in my mind that is currently available for purchase it does have the strap but the strap is is one so thin this being untreated leather like it's such a small part of the bag and a lot of people nowadays they interchange the straps with chains or i've seen a very pretty pearl extender something like that is also an option like if you do happen to get this bag pre-owned and you don't necessarily like the way it's tanned one you can going to Louis Vuitton and they will replace it you might have to pay a fee it just so depends on the mood of the person that you're dealing with but yes there is a service charge to replace the leather tab and also the strap but that is an option or you can most definitely buy a fun chain I have been able to use this one in a variety of different ways as a shoulder I've been able to exchange some of the straps that I have in my collection to make this a crossbody you can use it as a clutch if you want it's very versatile and the spacing on this one in particular particular is a little bit bigger and forgiving compared to a mini size bag so that is why i would for sure get a rectangular slim profile small bag to use because you never know when you do need a small bag or wherever you're going you can't carry your artsy with you you know what i mean so i don't know that i can say that i am lucky that i have all three in my collection because obviously they were not free i did have to buy them obviously it was just a hunt right for this first one literally just walked in the store and walked out with it this one same i walked in the store some lady was checking it out so the guy that i was working with i said hey do you have another one of those he's like um yeah we do i'm like yes please ring right now here's my payment box it i don't even have to look at it so definitely this was a much easier purchase compared to this one like this one I, it was a busy time whenever i got this one it was around the christmas holiday so it was it was like a nut house at the louis vuitton store Stu pretty much knew i was gonna get it um but this one yeah it was like purchase sight on scene even though i was on site and then this one um i was pretty much stalking the louis vuitton website and it was always out of stock so i couldn't get it that way and the previous purchases before this one had been with different clients advisors to where i didn't have a relationship already to where i can say hey can you think of me if you see this one so i was having a hard time tracking it both in store and online that's i i asked for one of my sister-in-laws to get this for me in one of her trips because i knew that she was gonna go where they had a little baton location and she was able to get it to me and then i just paid her once i got my item but that is how i got this one definitely way harder to get compared to the other two but regardless these bags are amazing and and I do have it in more than one. If it was just okay or if I, I was fine with it, I would probably just have one. But the fact that I got the other two, it tells you how versatile these bags are. And I am happy that I have them in my collection. And then very quick, one last thing I wanted to say about the Pochette as a source is um, the order in which I acquired them. So I did get my Damir and Ben first, which is this one. You can kind of tell by the color of the dust bag. This one was in 2014. That's whenever it was purchased. This one, I believe, was 2016. 17 which is the damir azor and then again like i said 2020 or 2021 for the monogram so you can definitely tell that i love them and i just didn't buy them just because like a frenzy or whatever with these i really did think through buying the second one and even the third one so that just goes to show that these bags are definitely a must to add back into my collection the next bag that i would add back into my collection would be more of a medium style of size and this one would have to be one that i can go freely on the go if you will this one is my very beautiful pochette matisse in the knock gray on prompt leather this one has the silver tone hardware this one is discontinued so getting a pochette matisse would obviously not be this one in particular possibly either a black on prompt or maybe the reverse canvas whichever to be honest i chose this one out of all the other ones that i have in my collection that are more of a medium size is because one you can have this one as a crossbody which will give you the hands-free option and then two even though it's 
compact and slim you have the spacing to use it as a medium sized bag like the compartments in here are very generous so you can add in a lot of stuff and I actually do have like air paper in here you can fit a ton in there so your essentials and probably just a little bit more i really do like this one it gives you the option to carry it as a clutch if you so want to or even like this like a mini briefcase i don't use either of those two options i know they're available to me if i ever so need to actually i have used this as a clutch one time i just called the strap inside just in case i needed to bring it out at some point and i did carry it now that i remember i've only done that one time though when i tend to use my pochette matisse it is almost always off the shoulder and not so much across the body but either way i really do love this silhouette this is actually my second pochette matisse but the only one that i do have in my collection and with this color being discontinued like i said i would probably do a dark version i have had a great luck with this style and i do like it and i do enjoy it and i do love this combination in particular so for sure another pochette matisse most of my handbag collection consists of medium to larger size handbags so for my third handbag that i chose which is a large size i went with one that is very versatile and one that is more carefree than actually a lot of my big bags are pretty much carefree but this one in particular is one that i love the versatility that it has available for me one that i'm talking about is my on the go this is in the size mm in the reverse monogram canvas style i have not had the gm within my collection nor the newer pm size neither i feel like for me in particular the mm size is perfect it is plenty for an everyday and if i ever need to just go overnight somewhere it's big enough to where i can carry my essentials in here i've never used this bag in particular for travel but i know it does have that option and it does also give me two looks so this bag to me is more than just one bag it is a top handle it does have these straps inside to be a shoulder bag I I've actually had this bag for a little bit over three years now um i just like a few weeks or a few days past the three year mark i can definitely do a review on it if you want i do have a comparison and also my unboxing video already up in my channel on this bag but it's a very cool bag and you know the the dual style gives you a variety to where if i was starting all over and i needed a large bag this gives me flexibility to use it with a wide array of outfits compared to just getting one you know i can also do like a black ombre like black goes with pretty much anything i really do like the reverse monogram the way they did it i think is perfect i wish louis vuitton had many more bags in the reverse monogram but this is a bag that i chose as my large bag option i feel like it's such a great companion that i would most definitely get in on the go in the mm size again so we're almost there if you are still with me and you are not yet a part of my channel please do consider subscribing moving on to the next item that i for sure will need to add back into my collection that is a belt i have this one by louis vuitton it is a dual sided so i have the monogram and then i have the black it does have the gold buckle if i was to do it all over again i would definitely look into the one that has the solid brown and then the black versus having a canvas and a leather primarily because it gives you a little bit of more versatility compared to this one whenever i do use this belts i tend to use it on the black side which is why it's prefixed on the black but um, swapping it over to the other side is so easy to do so that's not a big deal and also too i am so sad that i actually scratched this on like literally the first use so um let me show you that and we can all do a walk of shame boo so um yeah if you ever get this one and you're going to a restaurant don't lean so far in on that granite salad bar okay just take it from me don't do it so definitely do a belt kit that has a brown and a black or if not maybe like a cream and like a navy belt that is reversible so something along those lines but yes definitely we'll do a belt that is reversible all over again the next item is the only clothing related item that i'm going to be showing you today and that is my burberry quilt jacket or thermal quilt jacket i do have this one in two different variations um, I have it in this maroon and then I also do have it in this very nice um, pewter color 
so these are my two jackets that i have i really do want a third and just because i know that i want a third it says enough to where i at least need to add one back into my collection i don't have a classic black just because i feel like black in a quilted pattern is so easily duped or not even duped but it's an easy style to make if you are like a jacket company you know that's like hey i need a black and a thermal like it's very it doesn't stand out um compared to like the colors that i do have you know like these colors you don't really see a lot of jackets in this particular color you probably do see more in the maroon rather than this one in particular and whenever i wear these i don't really you know fold it over unless i do have like my watch or um like a lot of bangles i would kind of cuff it but i'm not so much cuffing it just because i want people to know that i'm wearing a burberry jacket like no actually um i prefer it not to show um it just depends where i'm going to so this one is the jacket that i got first and it took me a little while to get comfortable with it and not so much because it's not comfortable like it's a very comfortable jacket to wear but in the sense where i i knew that you can buy a jacket for 80 100 200 300 dollars but i was like oh my god it's it's expensive once i got in the groove of it i'm like you know what it is expensive get your cost per wear down girl so i wear it so much and i really started really enjoying it for the simpleness that it is it's it's keeping me warm and i need a jacket so i'm gonna use it sometimes my husband's like really you're going to kirkland's with your burberry jacket i'm like hell yeah i'm going to kirkland's with my burberry jacket it's cold outside yeah i use this like a jacket right i had a puff quilted style jacket by tommy hilfiger that i used for maybe five six years it was like the jacket that i wore if you saw me out i was wearing that jacket during the winter time so that was a good trip training wheel for me to realize like i do like this style like the puffy quilted style of jackets that in itself made it easier in my mind to say yes you will really enjoy a burberry jacket so i i went for it and i feel like i talked a lot about a jacket <laughs> you know it's just a jacket but i really do like it and it's not because of the burberry name it's just i mean it's something that i reach for on a cool day and very cold day and in a freaking cold day during winter or even like sometime late fall every now and then one fall day is gonna be so chilly um to where i am using this one so that is that one and then as soon as i got this one in particular i love the way that it fits with denim so that is one of the reasons why i this color compared to all the other ones and now if i was to get another one or one all over again which would technically be my third i really want it to be in a green tone whether that is a deep emerald or like a hunter green style and i guess there's a theme like you know jewel tone so you have your ruby you have your sapphire and now i'm missing my emerald <laughs> you know um i really do think that would be great or if not possibly the khaki or camel sort of color those would be the ones that i would pick next and um actually maybe i should get a jacket this christmas going on to the very last item this is a pair of shoes and i actually do have a bonus so two pair of shoes 10th item that i would get back into my collection are the i don't know if they're still popular i feel like a lot of people are like oh those are overrated like no you can get so many different ones and this is a pair that is a very easily duped and i think like steve madden makes one that's like almost spot on but anyways the pair that i am talking about is my iran sandals by hermes these were a pair that literally were in my box brand new for one year before i decided to bring them out to play i had made a video about my like luxury recaps of that year and i mentioned that possibly i would sell them if i found myself not reaching for them but come spring and summer i was like okay summer's coming we're gonna open them and finally i did use them and i have really used them i have found that there is like an adjustment period with these particular sandals after breaking these in i really did started to enjoy them first i thought that the color was like a little bit too striking but i had another pair of white sandals that i used a lot right so whenever i i finally broke into these i 
I got used to the Blanc of white, right? And I, I started combining this way more into my wardrobe to wear for a good month. They were like my everyday shoe, right? And then even more recently, my husband went out on a work trip and I tagged along with him. So these were like my everyday shoes over there. We were over there for like a week and some days. And I use these every day for the, they were like my house shoe over there in the hotel room. And then just to kind of tour around the area after in the evenings. So I really did use them and you can really tell that I do use these shoes. I'm very happy about that, especially because I really contemplated whenever I first got these. And now I, I like them so much that I want a second pair. I think I would definitely do it in a black color. So if I had to do it all over again, that would probably be the color. But if not, I really did like the whites. Again, it did take me such a long time to warm up to it, but I'm so happy that I eventually did not give up on these because they are my favorite luxury pair of shoes that I own. And um, the next pair that I am going to talk about or my number 11, my bonus, is a pair of heels or a pair of, I was gonna say sandals, but I just showed you a pair of sandals, um, but let me just show you. These are wedges. These are by Burberry and these are with the black leather. And then obviously you do have the check print on the side wedge right there. These I love because they are rubberized at the bottom. So it makes it so comfortable to use. These were actually a milestone gift from my now husband. So I got these after I graduated from college and I've had them for ever since then, right? At the time, the red bottoms were a thing. And looking back, even though I really did want a pair of red bottoms. I am 1000% happy with the fact that I did not go with a pair of Christian Louboutins because I hear they are ridiculously uncomfortable. I don't have a white foot, so I think it, it would work. But looking back, there's not a lot of instances where I have used a heel, like a formal style of heel. And the heels that I do have that I use a lot, they are either from Michael Kors, like the, the Dorothy Flex Pumps for work, or I do have Sarah Jessica Parker heels. But I do have one in particular that if I do have to wear a heel, like a pump style, I would wear that one. So I would most definitely not recommend Christian Louboutins, at least not for me or my style but i would definitely do a wedge style of heel all over again now these are discontinued burberry does not have these no longer available for purchase but i would definitely look into some kind of variation of this it does not necessarily have to be you know flashy the way this is with the check print but i mean whenever i'm talking about luxury give me a little something like a little emblem something that, that justifies why i'm paying more than a hundred dollars for a pair of wedges you know what I mean? So I would most definitely look into whatever options are available. And even though it's been so many years, these are one of my most used shoes for spring and summer. Just the other day, like I went to church with these and actually I should have cleaned them. I should have cleaned everything before I even showed you. But those are the 10 and bonus items that I would re-add into my collection if I had to start all over from scratch. Now, I don't know what the circumstance would be. Um, I don't think it was specified on any of the videos, but I am I'm assuming like if there was a fire, a theft, or why would I have all of these stuff in a suitcase and then lose them on an airline? Like, I don't know. But if you were to have all of your luxury pieces lost, what 10 pieces would you start all over with? Let me know what that is down in the comments. I am also going to try to tag some people to keep this video tag going, but I would double check to see if you already made it. Cause like I said at the beginning, it's been so many months since I was personally tagged and I'm just getting around to doing it. But even if I don't tag you and if you do have a YouTube channel, please feel free to continue this tag on and let me know what those 10 pieces would be or give me your top five because i know whenever i was tagged i was like oh my god i don't even have that many things like what would i talk about <laughs> and that's part of the reason why it took me some time to sit down to do the video but anyways i finally did get around to doing it again thank you so much karis for tagging me to do this luxury tag video and for all i want to thank you so very much for spending a little bit of your day with me or actually by looking at the time on my camera i should say for spending a lot of your time with me today. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.